Live from Case at 12, the night beat starts right now. New on the night beat, imagine finishing high school and being kicked out of your own graduation ceremony. That is exactly what happened to a Southwest ISD senior on Friday night at the Alamo Dome. The night team's Jonathan Coto spoke with a grad who says she was denied her diploma after breaking school protocol. I want my diploma. I deserve to have my diploma because why does everybody else get to have the diploma the same day and not me? Ashley Saucedo was one of 450 students at Southwest Legacy High School to walk the stage at Saturday night's graduation. Ashley Saucedo. Saucedo says she boldly and proudly displayed the Mexican flag but never imagined being edited out of the graduation video and escorted out of the Alamo Dome empty handed and humiliated. They take the main part out of the graduation video and they also let alone kick me out like you don't belong here like I did not do all these four years of high school just to be treated like this like I can't show my pride. Saucedo says it was a moment intended to make her parents proud and I just feel emotional because my parents are you know Mexicanos and they deserve to see a diploma in my hands. Saucedo also says a teacher removed a sarape style stole that she was wearing prior to the ceremony. We reached out to Southwest ISD and they say students are allowed to display individuality and pride in their heritage and culture on their caps, but protocols are applied to ensure events remain dignified without disruptions. I believe it's my opinion. If I would have had taken out a Texas flag, an American flag, the school would have taken it way differently. Tim Jaffney, it's graduation season, and this incident isn't exclusive to San Antonio. Similar case in North Carolina, a high school graduate denied his diploma after wearing the Mexican flag around his gown over the weekend. Now, Saucedo says all she wants is her diploma and, if possible, an apology. In its statement, Southwest ISD says, despite the disruption, the student was never denied the possibility of getting her diploma, but it is unclear when she will be getting it. For their full statement, you can head on over to KSAT.com. Reporting Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Jonathan, thank you. Families from all over joined together in support of a mother who was tragically killed by a man who confessed to her murder. A plate sale was held in the city of Somerset to help the family with expenses. Those who came out tell me helping this hurting family was the least they can do. It's so hard. To see somebody like that, their parents die, they don't have any money to bury them. That's why we're here. It was an emotional day for many who attended a plate sale in honor of the family of Marisol Klingelhofer. The somber event took place at the American Legion Post 443 in Somerset. It makes me feel very sad and very happy at the same time that um, people can come together and um, be thoughtful and raise money to help the family. Bear County investigators say Klingelhofer was allegedly killed by 36-year-old Andres Tarnava. An affidavit states Tarnava confessed he shot, dismembered, and burned her before her remains were hidden away in barrels, all because he believed she stole his late father's belongings. Each family that came by to the plate sale Sunday, some from neighboring cities, purchased a plate filled with food cooked and prepared by these volunteers. I know her and her sister siblings are very strong kids and they are going to overcome all this. With God's help, they will. They say it was an honor to serve Klingelhofer's daughter, Priscilla Gonzalez, and the rest of her family so that they can have a proper memorial service. I ask God to give her peace. New video tonight giving us a closer look at the moments 20 riders were rescued from atop a roller coaster at Six Flags Fiesta, Texas last weekend. You may remember this incident from last Saturday. This is video sent to us from a TikTok user who was on the scene. The poltergeist coaster stopped right in the middle of operation, leaving those riders with nowhere to go. San Antonio firefighters had to bring riders down one by one using a harness for safety. No injuries were reported and park officials said the ride would be fully inspected before being used again. Other top stories we've been following today. Several cars go up in flames as a fire tore through an auto repair shop on the southeast side this afternoon. It happened at Temple Hill Automotive off of Goliad Road. Firefighters tell us they saw smoke coming out of the shop when they arrived on scene. They estimated 10 cars were caught in the flames, which also caused the back part of that building to collapse. No injuries were reported, but firefighters estimate hundreds of thousands of dollars in damages. 
The cause tonight still under investigation. It was a violent end to the night for one Northwest Side moviegoer yesterday. Police say a woman was stabbed multiple times inside the Santicos Palladium Theater at the rim. This happened just after 11 p.m. Police say the suspect came up behind the woman, stabbed her, and ran out the back door. She was taken to the hospital in critical condition. Police tells us that they're using security video to help identify the suspect. San Antonio police say it was a wrong way driver who crashed into another vehicle, sending three people to the hospital overnight. That crash happened around 1230 a.m. on I-37. Officers say the wrong way driver hit the vehicle head on and then rolled over into a wall divider. Firefighters had to use the jaws of life to free that driver, but the person died at the scene. The vehicle that was hit had a couple and their teenage son inside. We're told all three are in serious condition tonight. To another heartbreaking story happening around Texas, a five-year-old boy shot and killed in Dallas, and police say they believe another child pulled the trigger. The shooting happened Friday night at an apartment complex. Police haven't released much information, but they do say that the child may have been shot by an eight-year-old who was also in the home. The five-year-old was pronounced dead at the scene. It's just scary, you know, because they're like right across the street and, you know, what if a bullet, you know, got lost somewhere and, you know, hit somebody else, you know, so I can't even imagine somebody having a gun, you know, in their house. I don't know. I mean, kids, you know, they're curious. Authorities have now launched an investigation to learn how the child got access to the gun. Police say the offense of making a firearm accessible to a child is part of their investigation. Let's give you one last recap of last night's runoff election results here in San Antonio, which are bringing new city leadership nearly across the board. In District 1, Mario Bravo got 54% of the votes, beating out incumbent Roberto Trevino. In District 2, newcomer Jalen McKee Rodriguez secured 63%, beating out incumbent Jada Andrew Sullivan. When sworn in, he will be the first openly gay man to serve on San Antonio City Council. Over in District 9, incumbent John Courage wins his third term with 54% of the votes. District 3, Phyllis Villagran takes over for her younger sister after getting 60% of the votes. Thomas Oresti secured just 40%. Meanwhile, finally, in District 5, they will be represented by newcomer Terry Castillo, who got 58% of the votes last night. And of course, KSAT's election coverage doesn't end there. You can get to know the newly elected and re-elected candidates and read about the issues they say they'll be focused on during their term. Right now at KSAT.com slash vote. Well, I hope you had a wonderful weekend. Some rain around yesterday. Today, just some passing clouds at times and that's what we're going to see more of this week so in the forecast our focus is starting to change from uh, chances of rain to focusing on an increase in temperatures as we head into the upcoming week. Uh, high temperatures today across the board 88 in San Antonio 89 up in New Braunfels 90 in New Valley 98 in Catula though so it was a bit hotter off to the south and to the west. We'll see more temperatures like this. In fact, more low 90s across the board over the next few days as uh, some late spring sizzle settles in this week. We'll talk more about that and get you ready for the week ahead coming up. Tim. Thank you, Katie. According to the CDC, the U.S. has now surpassed 300 million vaccine doses administered, but the pace on vaccinations has declined, which has health experts concerned. That's why federal health officials are calling June a month of action. Here's ABC's Trevor Alt with the details. More than 138 million Americans, about 41% of the U.S. population, are now fully vaccinated. But vaccination rates are on the decline, a trend health officials are concerned about. According to the CDC, about 1 million shots are being administered a day, down from the peak of more than 3 million a day in April. Dr. Anthony Fauci imploring Americans to roll up their sleeves. What a shame and a tragedy that we don't make use of something that is for our benefit when others throughout the world would do anything to have what we have. Dr. Fauci, along with First Lady Dr. Jill Biden, visiting a vaccination site in Harlem Sunday, hoping to encourage those who may be hesitant. President Biden has called June a month of action, pushing his goal of getting 70% of adults at least partially vaccinated by the 4th of July. We're announcing a month-long effort to pull all the stops, all the stops to free ourselves from this virus and get to 70% of adult Americans vaccinated. And COVID infections and hospitalizations are at 
the lowest level they've been since the pandemic began. But still about 325 Americans are dying from the virus each day. Now there are growing signs life is slowly returning to normal. People pack Chicago's beaches as temperatures top 90 degrees. Last year we were cooped up inside, it felt like. Even though we could take walks and go out, it wasn't really encouraged to come out to the beach. And being here felt really good today. Yet there are still reminders the pandemic. PGA officials saying in a statement he was subject to contact tracing protocols as he had come in close contact with a person who was COVID positive. So... Still to come on the night beat, gun violence erupts across America this weekend. A handful of mass shootings in multiple cities leave several dead and even more injured. We have the details on those. Plus, the battle over the border. Vice President Kamala Harris is traveling south of the border with a mission to slow the surging migration to the U.S. from Guatemala and Mexico. The latest from her trip. And President Biden still trying to negotiate with Republicans over his pricey infrastructure plan. The current counteroffer on the table next on The Night Beat. On Friday, President Joe Biden rejected a new counteroffer on infrastructure from Republicans, but his transportation secretary says the White House is still hopeful for a bipartisan agreement despite weeks of negotiations. John Lawrence reports. The Biden White House's infrastructure plan is still under construction. There are a lot of conversations going on among a lot of members of the, of the Senate and over on the House side. On Wednesday, there's going to be a markup for a key part, a key element of infrastructure policy. So lots going on right now, uh, but still lots of daylight, honestly, between us and our Republican friends. Despite that daylight, the Transportation Secretary is defending the administration's decision to continue talking with Republicans over going it alone. Democrats and Republicans are still billions of dollars away from securing a deal as the 2022 midterm elections grow closer. The Republicans are going to be talking about defining themselves okay. based on our differences on things like what is infrastructure. Biden has a paper thin majority in the Senate, so he needs the backing of key Democratic moderates like Senator Joe Manchin of West Virginia to get the package through without Republican support. Manchin says he wants to bridge the gap with the GOP. We need a bipartisan infrastructure bill. We most definitely need that. And infrastructure, something's been delayed for far too long by past administrations. So it's time for us to move forward. But for both sides, the clock is ticking. And there's not a lot of policy there. This is just numbers. It's, it's uh, helping uh, the country. And, and we ought to be able to find a resolution on that. If we can't, that spells trouble. I'm John Lawrence reporting. Taking a look at weather, Katie, I finally got Bo, my dog, a life jacket so he can learn how to swim. Uh -huh. Will he be able to use that pool this week? We've got more <laughs> pool weather in the forecast this week, especially as compared to the last few weeks. Tim, I know you'll be glad to hear that yes. as well. Uh, I, we're going to get into the local forecast, but I want to start off with the big picture. These were the high temperatures across the U.S. today. Look up in the northeast, low 90s and from D.C. up to New York. Technically, they were hotter than us today. Last weekend for Memorial Day weekend, they were in the 50s and 60s. So it's not just here in Texas that we see big temperature swings. Uh, most notably over the past several days, it has been very, very hot in the central and northern plains. The past couple of days, Bismarck's high has been in the triple digits today. A cool 86 for them there, but 90s into Minneapolis, 84 the high in Omaha. Again, we got up to 88 here in San Antonio, 100 the high in El Paso. So we've had a much wetter weather pattern across the southern tier of the U.S. And we've still got an upper level low spinning over far north Texas, mainly centered over Oklahoma tonight. That's bringing some wet weather into portions of the deep south. This upper level low not done with Texas quite yet. On the back side of this low, there's a little bit of lift, and that's helping to produce some storms up in the Texas Panhandle. This is a severe thunderstorm watch box, so we could have some severe storms across portions of the Texas Panhandle and North Texas tonight. Here in our part of the world, things are going to stay quiet through the overnight hours. One thing we'll be watching, though, especially heading into the early morning hours of Monday, is what happens with these storms up in North and West Texas. Models do sweep them across the state uh, such that couple of them could graze, uh, could graze our uh, northern counties and the San Antonio area. 
as we get into very, very early tomorrow morning. So that's why you'll see just a stray chance of a shower early on Monday. After that, the rest of the day tomorrow will be dry, rain free on Tuesday as that upper level low moves out of the way and high pressure builds in. This is a ridge of high pressure. And when you see this, you may think of the heat high. That's the big ridge that builds in over uh, uh, the western portion of the country in the summer months. It can put us in the triple digits for weeks at a time. This heat high is not quite that strong. Think of it as like it's younger cousin. It looks up to that big heat high, wants to be like it one day, but it's just not quite as strong. What it will do for us, though, is drop our rain chances heading into this week and also nudge our high temperatures up ever so slightly. So uh, what I've got for you here is the red line here at the bottom. That's your high temperatures for the week will be in the low 90s. That's seasonal for this time of year. That's about where we should be. The pink line right above it, that's the heat index. So when you factor in the dew point, the humidity, that's what it feels like to us. So especially by the middle part of this week, we'll start to have feels like temperatures flirting with 100 degrees. That's nothing that we can't handle, but especially compared to how cool it's been for the past several weeks. I think as we start to get into the low 90s with those higher heat index values, uh, it may take a few days to really get used to it. But this heat that we've got building in this week is very normal for this time of year. Out there currently 80 at the airport, 78 in New Braunfels, 88 in Carrizo Springs. So still plenty warm and humid. Our dew points uh, are essentially in the 70s across the board. Bevo, your sensor has a little bit of an error. You're likely in the mid to upper 70s like Victoria, but Bottom line, it is very, very muggy out there uh, across South Texas, and that's not really going to be changing. So I mentioned that area of storms moving into the Texas Panhandle. That's what we'll be watching overnight to see if those storms can wander to the I-35 corridor in Central Texas. I expect the activity to stay to the north of our area. Nonetheless, I'll leave in a low chance of a stray shower early tomorrow as that thunderstorm complex passes to our north. We could have a couple of little showers try to drift down uh, between Austin and San Antonio early tomorrow morning. Otherwise, cloudy start to the day tomorrow with temperatures in the 70s. So warm and muggy to start the day as we head into the afternoon. We'll break through to a mix of sun and clouds, putting our highs tomorrow upper 80s, low 90s. For a lot of us, it will be hotter off to the southwest anywhere from 98 in Del Rio uh, to 98 in Catula as well. So rain chances out of the forecast aside from a stray shower early tomorrow, and that's what kind of helps us to warm up a little bit more. But this is about where we should be for this time of year. Looking like a little better, a little better pool weather. Jaffney for Bo. Oh, yeah, and it's time to crank them fans up, too. Yeah. <laughs> All right, thank Katie. Uh -huh. Can't hide from the heat forever. <laughs> Still ahead, more than 40 injured by gun violence over the past couple days, and that's just in Chicago at 1030. Details from several scenes and what quickly became a violent weekend across America. That's right after a preview of Instant Replay. Next. Public outcries from superstar athletes this week over depression, starting with former Spur LaMarcus Aldridge. With more of what's on Instant Replay tonight, let's check in with our Greg Simmons. That is going to be tough for a guy who's played it his whole life, pretty much, the sport of basketball, and now cannot walk on the court ever again. And the NBA playoffs are all now in the second round following today's Game 7 between the Dallas Mavericks and the Los Angeles Clippers, coming up tonight on a brand new edition of Instant Replay. The Spurs with a great chance. Aldridge Former Spur LaMarcus Aldridge has admitted he suffers from depression after having to abruptly retire from the NBA due to a heart condition. And he's not the only superstar athlete with that outcry. So is four-time Grand Slam champion Naomi Osaka, who withdrew from the French Open this past week over anxiety at having to face the world's media after every match. Game seven is, is the toughest game. You know, you got to give everything. Today wasn't the result we wanted but we'll come back next year. The NBA playoffs have moved to the second round across the board following today's Game 7 between the Dallas Mavericks and Los Angeles Clippers. Hard to believe that the season is over for Luka Doncic, but carries on for former Spur Kawhi Leonard as the Clippers finally win at home in the first round. We're getting the right spot and everything for it, so, you know, I'm, I'm going to be more than prepared. And before he steps into the ring to defend his world championship later this month, as the featured match in a worldwide broadcast, our Larry Ramirez goes one-on-one -on -one with Mario Barrios tonight. All that plus, what should the NBA do about bad fan behavior? Tonight, you decide. Instant Replay is live, and it's after the night beat. And why has it been so much of an issue in the playoffs? I don't understand that. It's not just there. It's on airplanes and everywhere else, too. But NBA certainly has something you know what? to deal with. Very good point. Very Everybody's good point. Everybody's behaving badly, mm -hmm. except Greg. <laughs> <laughs> the night beat continues right after this. Yeah.
It has been a violent weekend across America with multiple mass shootings only adding to the already high number we've seen just in 2021 and the suspects in many of these cases still at large. We'll begin in Florida where a graduation celebration came to a tragic end. Three people were killed and six others were hurt when police say gunmen opened fire outside of that party. Miami-Dade police say police were leaving a hookah lounge or people were leaving a hookah lounge restaurant early that this morning when two cars drove up and someone started shooting. The six surviving victims hit by gunfire were able to drive themselves to a hospital and are reported to be in stable condition. A woman confirmed to be a Florida corrections officer and two men were killed. The suspect's vehicles got away from the scene right after the shooting. No word on any arrest or who those suspects might be. Now to Chicago, where police say at least five people were killed and 40 people shot in a number of incidents throughout the weekend in that city. From all of those shootings, six people are still in critical condition tonight. The Chicago Police Department reported 34 police responses to shooting incidents between 4 p.m. Friday until 5 a.m. today. In one, one incident, eight people shot standing on a sidewalk were wounded in a drive-by shooting early this morning. Police have not made any arrests in that case. Police records also show no arrests in any of the other separate fatal shootings. Closer to home in New Orleans, at least eight people were injured in a shooting. Of those victims, police say a woman who was shot in the face is still in critical condition. The other seven victims are last reported to be stable, with some of them having grazed wounds. Officers say the shooting happened shortly after midnight on an Interstate 10 service road. No word yet on a motive or if any arrests have been made at this time. Meanwhile, a child is dead and a man injured in a double shooting in New York City. This happened overnight in Queens. Police say a 10 year old boy was taken to the hospital after being shot in the stomach. He was later pronounced dead. A 29 year old man was shot in the shoulder. His condition tonight unknown. Police say they found several shell casings at that scene, but are still working to piece together exactly what happened and no arrests have been made. It's also worth noting NYPD says this shooting happened not long after a 12 year old girl and 25 year old man were shot in a separate incident in the Bronx. Finally, police are investigating a shooting at a Tennessee motel, which left three people all under the age of 18 with gunshot wounds. It happened at a day's end in Nashville. Police were called to there only to find the victims with gunshot wounds. No suspect to be found. The victims were taken to a children's hospital for treatment. No update on their conditions. And as in all of these cases we've just read, police are still investigating. Shifting gears now to immigration. Technical problems on Air Force Two lead to a slight delay for Vice President Kamala Harris's first foreign trip. That's right. The plane forced to return to Joint Base Andrews shortly after takeoff. Eventually, the Vice President boarded another plane for her trip to Guatemala. Here's ABC's Ike Jachi with the details. Vice President Kamala Harris giving a thumbs up at Joint Base Andrews before switching planes, a technical issue during takeoff forcing her to turn around before continuing on her trip to Guatemala and Mexico. She's already met with the leaders of both nations virtually, but will now sit down face to face. It's going to be an, an honest and, and real conversation, so I do. I'm, I'm there to listen as much as I am to share um, perspective. Her mission? to slow surging migration from the region now at levels not seen in decades. Gloria Amador is a nurse in Guatemala. She says many parents leave because they can't find work. The World Food Program estimating nearly 4 million Guatemalans now struggling with acute hunger and food insecurity. More than 46 percent of children under five have stunted growth. In April, the U.S. committed $310 million in immediate aid, the White House proposing nearly $4 billion over the next four years a stark contrast from the Trump administration that halted nearly all aid to the area. The Biden administration has quietly tasked humanitarian groups with recommending which migrants should be allowed to seek asylum in the U.S. The administration is trying to address the challenge of lifting some of the more restrictive Trump administration policies, but also not encouraging another period of increased arrivals. This Honduran mother reunited with her 14 and 10 year old children. She says she sent them alone across the border in search for a better life, telling ABC she cried every day when they were apart, but she felt she had no choice. Like any other mom, just wants the best for her children. She had to make the hardest decision. I don't know that I could have made it. The kids had been placed with the foster family in Ohio last November after crossing the border illegally. Their mother stayed behind to wait on her asylum case. Ike Jachi, ABC News, Washington, D.C.
We're wrapping up the weekend tonight with a look outside with live cam. Kind of hard to tell here, but we do have some lower clouds already starting to build back in tonight and that'll set us up for a gray start to the work week tomorrow. Very similar to what we saw this morning. So your time lapse from today gray in the morning, but we quickly started to see some blue sky and sun through early afternoon. Here's 1 p.m. And then you may have noticed early through mid afternoon things started to turn a little darker out there. We just had a little batch of clouds pass on through a little bit more blue sky by about five o'clock and then nice and mostly clear this evening. But as you'll see here, those low clouds already starting to fill back in. So a great start to your Monday, but it'll be nice and toasty by the afternoon. Slim chance of rain early tomorrow as well. We'll talk more about that and get ready for the week coming up in a bit. Daphne. Thank you, Katie. He's impacting others one step at a time. How one man's walks turns into something a whole community looks forward to. That's next. A Lotus man has had a major impact on his neighbors simply by walking. His name is Casper Rawls and he is next on What's Up South Texas. Here's his story and here's why people see him as Casper the Friendly Walker. Keep it up. You too, sir. Good to see you. Pleasure. My pleasure. Some people have started walking again and running again because of him. People living in this Holotus neighborhood are all too familiar with this 66-year-old. His name is Richard Rawls, but he goes by Casper. It's like a flower in the desert. He's been just a wonderful neighbor and a, and a wonderful guy just to be with. You see, Casper is his stage name during his night job performing as a guitarist for many different bands. But when the sun is out, you can catch him walking mostly every day for miles. I'm always happy to meet anybody and, and, and talk if they want to talk or wave if they want to wave. Casper grew up in this neighborhood and eventually hit the road as a musician. His cardio obsession started when he was a boy, but it took a deeper route at age 30 when his mother became very ill. Running was his escape. When she passed away, it was a great outlet for me to run just to have, you know, something to do. An escape that led to running all over the country, even doing marathons. When I go back on tour, went back on the road, I found a book said places to run across America. And doggone it if I didn't run almost all of them. But his running days came to an end right before the pandemic. Knees went bad. Um, right before COVID, I had knee surgery. And the doctor said, your mediocre running career is over. He said, you can walk. I said, then that's what I'll do. Casper has been walking ever since, inspiring his neighbors and those who pass by with his story and a simple wave. One step at a time. That's all it is. One foot in front of the other. That's just God working through me, you know. I just walk down the road. But if, if, it, if God inspires you to get up and want to walk too, God bless you. For What's Up South Texas, I'm Jaffney Gray. Amazon's Prime Day right around the corner. So is Father's Day. When and where you might score some great deals in the month of June. Next on the Night Beat. It's the season for grads and dads at Amazon's Prime Day coming up and you can do some serious shopping. Whether you're looking for a baby stroller or a smartwatch or just something to keep the mosquitoes from biting. 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz says June can be the best time to buy. As we head into summer, the deals are heating up. Even Amazon is getting an early start. Amazon Prime Day will be in June this year. It will fall on the 21st and 22nd. We're expecting big sales across the board from Amazon and other retailers are going to be joining in as well. So what's hot and discounted? Consumer Reports tracks its top tested products to know when is the best time to buy. For parents, the Brytex Be Lively stroller is on sale. $204 at Bye Bye Baby, Bed Bath & Beyond and Target. It got top test scores for safety and maneuverability. Spending time outside, you'll want protection from the sun and bugs. The Hawaiian Tropic Island Sport Spray SPF 30 is $9 at Amazon and Walmart. And Repel Lemon Eucalyptus Insect Repellent is $5 at Amazon and Walmart. Father's Day is coming up. You can save money on this DeWalt cordless 12-volt drill. It's $130 on Amazon. It tested well for power and speed. June is also prime time for deals on pressure washers, but... 
you may not need to buy a pressure washer. You can rent one from a store like Home Depot or Lowe's if you just have a small project. And in the health department, this Omron 10 series blood pressure monitor is on sale for $69 at Best Buy and Walmart. For dads and grads, June is also a good time to find deals on smartwatches. We found some sales on Fitbit and Apple models on Amazon and Walmart. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. In other consumer news, Amazon says starting June 8th, unless you opt out of Amazon Sidewalk, you're going to start sharing your internet with your neighbors. Amazon Sidewalk is a new feature that will automatically share people's internet connection to help some devices work better. The company says the monthly total for the data used by Sidewalk will be at 500 MB per account. That's the equivalent of streaming about 10 minutes of high definition video. Oh, but what are the security concerns? Right. Royal Caribbean ships are getting ready to set sail in the U.S. for the first time in 16 months. The company says six of its ships will begin sailing from cruise ports in Florida and Texas in July and August. The first ship will set sail on July 2nd in Miami. According to Royal Caribbean, 90% of all passengers are either vaccinated or planning to get vaccinated in time for their crew. cruise. All ship crew will also be fully vaccinated. All right, April showers are supposed to bring May flowers, but the April and May showers bring <laughs> May flowers and lots of fungus in your yard. <laughs> the, the mold, the mushrooms that yeah. have popped up everywhere. Uh, hopefully that mold count will start to drop a little bit tomorrow with the lack of rain today. That has been an issue for sure. And yeah, we've got those mushrooms popping up. Grass is real tall. We're going to have to do some mowing, but... There's a bright side to it. I like this picture from Sylvia over in Seguin sharing the, the beautiful flowers that certainly have been loving this rainy pattern recently. And before we look forward to a less rainy week ahead, another look back at rainfall at the airport since May 1st, uh, 7.77 inches of rain. That's almost three inches above average for that time span between May 1st and now. And since January 1st, almost 17 inches of rain at the airport. And that puts us 3.3 uh, inches above where we should be through this point in the year in terms of rainfall. So uh, this rainy pattern, I know it was inconvenient at times. We had some severe weather here or there, but as we kind of turn toward a drier and slightly warmer pattern this week. I think we can reflect on how great the rain has been for um, for our aquifer. Also in terms of the drought monitor, we had had some really dry earth out there. So that rain overall was a good thing for us here. 80 at the airport clouds have moved in. This sensor was reading clear at the top of the hour, so 47 minutes ago or so. And now we've had some low clouds start to settle in. Those low clouds will um, kind of put a a damper on how much temperatures drop tonight. So plan on it being a pretty warm and muggy morning tomorrow. So 80 at the airport, 78 New Braunfels, still 90 in Laredo, also 90 in Del Rio at this hour. Pair that with dew points in the 70s, and it's feeling like <laughs> late spring out there. No doubt about it. Doppler radar is quiet tonight. The little color here you see next to our radar site in New Braunfels, that's the daily trek of the bats leaving their cave and sometimes that showing up on radar can trigger the KSAT weather app. So I actually got an alert top of the hour that we had some moderate rain, but it was just the radar picking up on the bats that show up on radar leaving their cave. So that's kind of a daily routine that we're starting to get into now. Across Texas, some rain up near the Red River. We've also got some storms moving into the western part of the state up in the Panhandle. That upper level low that's been with us for the past couple of days is moving away, but on the west side of this low, there's a little bit of lift remaining, helping to fire off some strong to severe storms up in far west Texas, eastern New Mexico. We're going to keep an eye on these storms overnight. Forecast models do bring them east and a little bit south towards central Texas by early tomorrow morning. This is 8 a.m. I expect the bulk of the activity by far to stay well north of San Antonio. However, I'm going to leave in a chance that a stray little straggler shower uh, could drop down toward our area through early tomorrow morning. Again, I expect most of the thunderstorm activity tonight to stay north of our area through Austin, really, and points north. 
Mainly we're just looking at a cloudy, warm and muggy start to the day tomorrow. As we get into Monday afternoon, those storms will continue to rumble into far east Texas. We'll see a mix of sun and clouds in the afternoon and another toasty day. Upper 80s, low 90s in and around uh, the metro area off to the west and to the south. Anywhere from 98 in Del Rio down to near 100 in Laredo. Nice and breezy though tomorrow afternoon. That'll help us out with the warm and muggy conditions. Winds will be about 10 to 20 miles per hour. So I know we've got some dirty cars out there, mine included. We're heading into a stretch of weather now where it's totally safe to wash your car. So we've got that going for us in the week ahead as rain chances drop out of the forecast this week, aside from that really slim chance of a shower early tomorrow. I know we, maybe we don't love to see the 90s. We would like to keep the 80s around, but this is where we should be for this time of year. Our average here in town is 92. So we will take that while we can get it, guys. Yeah, eventually that big old high is going to park itself over top of us. Yep. Thanks, Katie. Mm -hmm. As audience return to theaters, it seems they're itching to be scared. Two horror sequels duke it out for the top spot. Your weekend box office report is next. Raya and the Last Dragon brought in $1.3 million in its 14th straight weekend in the top five. The animated adventure Spirit Untamed debuted in fourth place with $6.2 million. Cruella made off with $11.2 million, falling to third place in its second weekend out. A Quiet Place Part 2 was the weekend runner-up, earning $19.5 million for a 10-day domestic total of $89 million. The murder weapon belongs to him, and it's got his fingerprints all over it. Nobody's disputing any of that. The Conjuring, The Devil Made Me Do It is the new box office champ. The third film about paranormal investigators Ed and Lorraine Warren opened with $24 million in ticket sales. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Oh, it's getting closer. The NFL kicks off mandatory mini camp starting tomorrow. So when do the Cowboys and Texans open their own? And should the Texans start finding their star quarterback Deshaun Watson if he fails to show up? With more on what's on instant replay, let's head over to uh, Greg Simmons. I would say not at this time, but the story still has to play out. And San Antonio FC is able to come from behind and win on the road. Coming up tonight in a brand new edition of instant replay. Be. And we just we just need this time on the field together. We can't just have enough of it. NFL mandatory mini camps kick off tomorrow. The defending Super Bowl champs up first. When did the Cowboys and Texans open their own mini camps? And what does it mean for players like wide receiver C.D. Lamb, who was robbed of his first as a rookie due to the COVID-19 pandemic? Should the Texans start finding their star quarterback Deshaun Watson if he's a no-show? The sports guys are back tonight. It's just the perfect way to come back. I think the team fought a lot in the game and. We definitely deserve something from it. San Antonio FC is able to come from behind to at least pull out a draw on the road in Colorado Springs last night after both teams' players handed red cards when a scuffle broke out just before halftime. And last year, due to the pandemic, we did not have a chance to grade the Spurs following their season. Now that chance is back starting tonight. All that plus, it's USA versus Mexico tonight in the inaugural CONCACAF Nations League trophy match. Instant replay is live, and it's next. And by the way, that match is still going on as we speak. Wow. It's a long one. All right, we'll stay tuned for that. Thank yeah. you, Greg. Well, whether you like it sour or sweet, your lemonade of choice is going to a good cause. We'll explain more after the break.